Caution, this medication may cause dementia. In this video, I'll discuss nine modifiable factors we can control that may cause dementia. If you're concerned about your brain health and memory, it's crucial you watch this video to the end, as I'll reveal all the scientific evidence regarding dementia. Many ask about the connection between endocrinologists and dementia. I'll explain in this video why various factors, including hormonal ones, can damage our brain. An endocrinologist's perspective is essential when addressing memory decline and dementia. Let's understand more about this. Later, I'll cover what you always ask about, which medications increase dementia risk, so pay close attention. Let's begin with the nine factors. The first factor I want to highlight is a hormonal change that can impair your memory. And often, this hormonal change gets overlooked. Why? Because other symptoms become more noticeable when someone is losing memory. If this change isn't treated, it can even lead to dementia. It starts with mild memory changes, and if you ignore it, it can progress to dementia. A reversible brain change. This is really important. What is this change? It's a thyroid alteration, especially reduced thyroid hormone, when the thyroid can't properly produce its hormones. This directly affects your brain and memory, causing initial memory lapses that can progress to dementia, a reversible form of dementia that can completely improve if identified and treated early. Many people ask me about the relationship between the thyroid and the brain because our brain needs thyroid hormone just like the heart and intestines do. These organs all require this hormone and our brain is no exception. You saw I mentioned how important endocrinologists are in this field, so we're starting with one of the main areas of endocrinology, the thyroid, which is incredibly significant. Tests like TSH and free T4 are essential when dealing with memory issues. A thyroid evaluation is absolutely necessary. I emphasized hypothyroidism, but many might wonder, what about hyperthyroidism when the thyroid produces excessive hormones? In that case, we also see brain changes, but the person may become more irritable, anxious, or their existing anxiety might worsen. So, this can happen, okay? But memory loss is less common in hyperthyroidism and very common when thyroid hormones are reduced. Clear enough? Number two, another reversible cause of dementia is a deficiency in a vitamin that's crucial for our brain and memory, which can lead to dementia if not identified and treated. Another reversible cause of dementia. Catch it early and you can reverse the whole process. What vitamin is this? I'm talking about B. It's vital for prevention, early memory changes, and like thyroid issues, requires assessment to check B12 levels. Why? This vitamin is involved in two basic and major functions in our body that I want you to know about. There are many reactions it's involved in, but for this video, I'll explain two. One of the main functions is in the bone marrow. B12 is essential for producing blood cells, like red blood cells. So a deficiency in this vitamin can even cause anemia or reduction of other cells. Got it? That's one function. The other major function is in the central nervous system, protecting neurons and forming myelin the protective coating around neurons. If this vitamin is low in your blood and goes untreated or undetected, it can begin with memory problems. This can progress to dementia, changing brain structure and neural connections, ultimately leading to dementia. So if you're experiencing memory issues or know someone with dementia, talk to the doctor about checking B12 levels. This needs to be monitored regularly. A single test isn't enough as vitamin deficiency can develop over time. Various medications can interfere with this. I'll provide specific recommendations later, but let's continue with our video. The third factor that can harm your memory, even cause dementia. I won't belabor this point because you already know it, right? I hope you're aware it's smoking not just traditional cigarettes, but also e-cigarettes and hand-rolled cigarettes. Smoking itself can damage your brain by increasing oxidative stress and harming your neurons. Also, still at number three, what can harm your memory are alcoholic drinks, especially alcoholism, 
which has many consequences for our body. I won't go into detail here because everyone knows, but it's important to mention since people often take care of other things and when I ask about smoking or if they're drinking a lot or smoking, it's one of the points we need to discuss. Number four, which isn't talked about much but can harm your brain and brain waves, is obstructive sleep apnea. What is that? It's when during sleep, you have reduced oxygen flow to your body, tissues, muscles, and also your brain. Oxygen levels stay low in your body. This in the long run can impair your memory. Did you know that? So if you're snoring a lot, if you wake up very tired, feel like you haven't slept, or if someone who sleeps with you has mentioned that you snore heavily or wake up during the night gasping for air, it seems like you're suffocating. Actually, it's not just a feeling, your oxygen levels could be dangerously low in your blood, causing this sensation of oxygen flow obstruction. This needs to be evaluated. There's a relatively simple test called polysomnography that can help diagnose and treat this condition, okay? So evaluating your sleep is very important. One of the first things I ask patients is how they're sleeping. I also question others who sleep with that person or in the same house because they might provide important clues. Often, the answer lies in sleep patterns, so this is fundamental. And number five, which can increase dementia risk, yet isn't discussed enough, is high blood pressure. Did you know that? If you didn't, your like and subscription to this channel are already worthwhile. If you're already subscribed, don't forget to activate the notification bell because I'm sharing lots of scientific evidence here. So if you're learning something, don't forget to like this video. Well, why did I mention that high blood pressure often gets overlooked? Did you know that when your body operates with elevated blood pressure, one of the areas that this high pressure can harm or damage is your brain because we have blood vessels that deliver essential supplies to your brain. If you have high blood pressure issues, this supply can be impaired. There's a type of vascular dementia where oxygen flow is blocked, causing memory loss and potentially leading to dementia. This form of dementia has a commonly recognized characteristic, right? It's popularly known as step progression dementia because people living with the affected person can notice when memory declines, unlike with Alzheimer's, which is more common. This vascular dementia occurs in episodes. Each time blood flow is interrupted and neurons are lost, the person regresses slightly, which can often be identified, so it's essential to monitor blood pressure levels, right? By checking your blood pressure at home, you're already helping your health. I always like to advise people, even in my office, to measure at home and at the doctor's office, because sometimes there's a false elevation we call white coat pressure or white coat hypertension. When someone only has high blood pressure during doctor visits, right? The doctor might see this, assume the patient is hypertensive, prescribe medication, then at home their pressure normalizes, causing fainting or illness. So it's crucial to evaluate how it behaves at home, right? In a normal routine, okay? The opposite also happens, which is called masked hypertension. A person with high blood pressure at home may have normal readings at the doctor's office, feeling calmer in the doctor's presence. Did you know this could happen? Do you have either of these types? White coat hypertension is much more common, and if this is your case, write in the comments below. So at least once a week, if you don't have high blood pressure, it's worth taking these measurements. Always remember to note the date, time, heart rate, and both numbers provided. The first and second. The first called systolic pressure and the second diastolic pressure. The sixth factor that can increase dementia risk, which is very interesting, is a sedentary lifestyle. Did you know that physical activities like running, walking, swimming, or weightlifting at the gym can protect your neurons, memory, capacity, and cognitive reserve? It's really important to practice some form of physical activity. I know many people will say, oh, but I can't because I have hip pain, knee pain, or shoulder pain. You can choose an activity that fits into your routine and matches your profile. You don't necessarily have to go to the gym or run outdoors. If you do any activity within your capabilities and conditions, it'll be very beneficial for your memory. Not to mention the other benefits, right? for your overall health, but also specifically for memory. Factor number seven, diabetes, which often gets overlooked when discussing memory. Did you know high blood sugar can damage your brain? Why? When our body consistently operates with elevated blood sugar levels, 
Excess glucose can damage blood vessels and affect blood supply. That's one of the major problems with diabetes and high blood sugar. Studies show people with uncontrolled glucose levels have higher risks of developing dementia and memory problems. So take care, right? Maintaining a healthy lifestyle with fiber, avoiding processed sugary foods, and eating vegetables and fruits can protect your memory. And factor number eight, which is really interesting, is having a cognitive reserve, practicing activities that help your brain. For example, learning a new language or doing activities like word searches or crossword puzzles can really help you. What's particularly interesting is that Social isolation increases risk and can affect your memory. So having an activity and participating in a group is very beneficial for your health. Now this is pretty common, right? Even in some videos, people only want to watch 10 or 20 second clips, right? What can you possibly learn from such a short video? How can a doctor share meaningful information in such a brief clip? Many people have developed the habit of only watching these quick videos. If you're watching this longer video, congratulations. You're protecting your memory, gaining knowledge, evolving, and building a cognitive reserve. Unlike some people who just want to skip through videos, right? 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Oh, if the video is long, I know I'll have to make an effort. I don't watch it, right? So that's one reality. And you're already fulfilling this item here, right? You're informing yourself, gaining scientific knowledge, so congratulations. Let's move to number nine, this controversial issue about medications. I'll explain the classes, which medications, and what scientific evidence exists. First, I'll tell you about rumors often spread on the internet as if they were facts. So you need to be very careful with information too. These include anticholinergics, some antidepressants, anti-nausea medications, right? Medications for vomiting, improving intestinal function, and some pain medications, painkillers. There are many rumors about this, but there's no robust scientific evidence, and I won't name specific medications like antipsychotics because we don't exactly know how they work and there are potential harms. Medications for stomach acid also have some rumors, but there's no scientific proof about this either. I will mention another group that does have larger studies showing effects. Benzodiazepines, medications like alprazolam, bromazepam, diazepam, clonazepam, and lorazepam. Do you recognize any of these medications? Perhaps by their brand names? These medications can alter your brain waves during sleep. This, in the long term, can impair your memory. So it's very important to be cautious if you're taking any of these medications. Talk to your doctor to see if there are alternatives. See if you can gradually taper off, stopping little by little, or if there's another medication you could use instead of benzodiazepines. We already know they alter sleep waves, which means you might not rest as well. There's also another important factor. They increase the risk of fractures, especially in older adults. A hip fracture, for example, can severely reduce your quality of life and even increase mortality. So this medication issue is very serious. Okay. I want to highlight in point number nine that many studies have evaluated this. However, these benzodiazepine studies try to find associations with what happened to people who use them, right? They experience memory reduction, for example. But it's important to note that association doesn't always imply causation. What does this mean? It doesn't prove if you take this dosage, you'll develop dementia in this time frame. Many people have this question, and why don't doctors conduct a study that will actually prove this? Because it's very difficult to carry out such a study. You'd have to select a drug that can cause this brain change and then separate into groups. In one group, you give this medicine. In the other, you give flour, for example, a placebo capsule and follow up to see what happens. But why is it so difficult to do this? Sounds simple, doesn't it? Who would agree to participate in such a study? Oh, I'll give you this medicine at this dose and we'll see if you'll have dementia in a month, a year, or two years. There's no way, right? Who would accept that? I wouldn't accept it, would you? So it's very difficult, not to mention from an ethical professional standpoint, this wouldn't be possible either, right? Under these conditions. So these are the studies that evaluate and try to identify a cause. And here we saw it. However, it's important to highlight that there's also this other side. Would you know the early signs of dementia, that dementia may be 
starting memory changes, how to identify them. I've already made a video about this, the main signs of dementia, and it's very important to distinguish what's normal and what's not, what the warning signs are. If you click here, you'll be directed to that video. You'll keep learning, protecting your brain, acquiring scientific information. A hug. See you next time.